Cyclone Bip our joy, stronger and unpredictable. that we've been tracking for quite a while is still going rather slowly and will continue to do so for the next few days. It could still be around three or four days until it makes landfall. It's currently at 18.6 north, 67.6 east and we're classifying it as a category two right now on the Safa Simpson scale. As of 3 p.m. Pakistan time this June 11th, it had winds of 100 miles per hour and a pressure of 964 millibars, that's 160 kilometers per hour moving north at 6 miles per hour or 10 kilometers per hour so fairly slow at the moment and quite close to the coast of India right now we expect it will round towards the west a little bit and possibly make landfall in Pakistan in uh, a few days here it is right now displayed on the map the southern wind quadrants are by far the largest uh, the northerly really not so much and we've got a tropical storm watch that we are provisionally issuing for Sutrapada in Gujarat northwards to Garo in Pakistan. It's 389 kilometers from Somnath, 429 from Dwarka, 527 from Rajkot inland, 697 from Karachi and 758 from Hyderabad in Pakistan. We expect that the storm's motion will turn a little bit further towards the northwest shortly and will remain a fairly slow moving storm before curling back north and then northeastwards. We're still concerned about flash flooding then because the track forecast remains uncertain. Flash flooding is likely to impact a larger area than the storm's winds. Wherever it makes landfall, we're now expecting rainfall totals of 750 millimeters with very high rain rates leading to major flash flooding issues. That's even more exacerbated now that that rainfall estimate has gone up from 500 millimeters last time we did an update. Here's the projection forecast then for the next few days and there is still a lot of uncertainty about this so don't watch it too closely the center of the storm but look at all the areas in green there where the tropical storm force winds would reach. Karachi still very much within that area possibly and then it moves inland there uh, turning northeastwards and by the end of the week over into the weekend it's pretty much uh, dead and gone by the time it heads towards New Delhi. Um, interesting estimates right now because they're all over the place really. The Indian Meteorological Department going about 105 miles per hour, JCWC right up there with 120, ADT is way down with 85 so we've sort of gone in the middle of all of that at 100 miles per hour right now um, because it's still a little bit early to tell whether this eye is properly developing or not. We'll see it properly on the satellite imagery in a moment. JWC forecast, despite its current intensity, only has it barely reaching land as a uh, hurricane equivalent storm and it makes landfall just about on the Indian side there according to that forecast uh, and then turns well inland northeastwards and dies fairly quickly. And here's the GFS forecast model showing again the storm's uh, presence there, really harassing the coast there for quite a while and possibly strengthening more before it reaches land there according to that GFS model. JWC interestingly not on board with that but looking at this forecast uh, calling for probably a category 3 maybe even getting towards high end category 3 there in a few days as it gets closer to the coast but most importantly it does start to weaken before it finally makes landfall pretty much in the same location as the JTWC was forecasting maybe slightly further north right on the border with uh, Pakistan there. Rainfall profile over the next few days as well. Once again, you'll note there the southern side is by far the most well established. It turns northeastwards and then it starts to circle the storm a little bit better there. But generally, it is that southern side that will carry by far the highest amount of rainfall. So northern side will be the fairly dry side in comparison to that southern side. And that's where you'll see that potential 750 millimeters of rainfall. Again, probably right on the border between Pakistan and India, maybe slightly further south and even after it moves inland there for a long time there's a lot of rainfall being produced there and this is the rainfall totals then the estimate over the next seven days 
Uh, the storm moving northwards at first and then it starts that turn northeastwards massive amounts of rainfall dropping there and then as it makes landfall just on the edge of those white zones which is you know off the charts as it is um, getting up towards 30 inches which is 750 millimeters and well inland it's still getting up to 400 500 millimeters thankfully off the shore it is much higher even so we're not going to see that on land 46 inches out there and towards New Delhi as well maybe even getting a little bit of rain there maybe up towards 50 millimeters so a lot going on there sea surface temperatures these will read just a little bit low but they are around 29 degrees Celsius at least possibly making a run for 30 degrees at the moment it is leaving the warmer waters that it was leaving behind further south uh, but the sea surface temperatures right the way up until landfall around 29 degrees Celsius quite comfortably of course temperatures inland uh, overland are much warmer so decent conditions if the storm can hold off that shear which it appears to be starting to do you'll see it on this satellite imagery this is the latest visible from uh, insat indian satellite you can see its movement there looks to me now that it already has started that northwesterly movement a little bit there moving quite slowly of course and this is visible imagery once again curling around the eye feature becoming more visible and I think this storm is looking like it's intensifying and might actually reach at least on our estimates category 3 status later on but there it is in a more um, wider shot uh, from the Mateo sat satellite as well uh, and again you can notice there maybe gradual movement northwestwards now and this is the Force 13 floaters which you can look at online right now force13.com slash satellite and one or two hot towers as well uh, near the eye at the moment too which looks interesting and this is the infrared and you can start to see that eye structure a little bit better but I think it is wise to hold off on that higher intensity at the moment but it could be on the way.